Hello, this is Leo with Scraptastic Patchwork, and I am back with another tutorial. This time, I was grabbing from my UFO shelf, my unfinished object shelf, trying to get some of these projects done that I have up there, and I came across these five patchwork blocks that I had made during my tutorial for an easy pineapple block. Now, if you have not seen that video, I will link it below. It is an easy way, very fun way with no cutting little pieces. Um, this pineapple block where it's just kind of fun open, opening up a flower or a pineapple block, I guess. This one has tiny little pieces that you start with. Isn't that fun? So I thought, okay, what am I going to make with these five blocks? So I went on Pinterest. I went on Google. I looked at my quilt books. I mean, I looked everywhere thinking I didn't want to do a pillow. I didn't want to do another table runner. I didn't want to do mug rugs. I mean, Absolutely, those all those projects would have been fine. I wanted to do something a little different. So I started playing around with them and putting them kind of in different formations. And I came up with just having this kind of three vertical and three horizontal thing going on. And I thought, what the heck? What could I do with that? And then I, it occurred to me, what is five-sided? A cube! An open-top fabric square storage box. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to make a cute little fabric, uh, fabric cube that you can store whatever you desire. And you can either make it each side a patchwork. You know, you can go watch my video and make these, or you can do a solid piece of fabric. And I'm going to use the scraps from all these blocks to make my inside, because we'll, we'll cut out pieces for the lining and the exact size, and then I'm gonna bind it as well on the top. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Okay, this is what we're going to need to make our, I think I might quilt it too. So we're going to call this a, a quilted fabric storage cube. I have these five blocks, as I said, and mine are nine inches square. I, I trimmed them and cut them down to nine inches square. So then I went ahead and did nine inches square pieces for the lining. So I have five of those. Then we need batting of some sort. So I really wanted, it, I was looking in my stash for um, either fusible foam or uh, just foam in general. It's real nice to keep its form and it, and it stands there very nice. But I only had a, small pieces. So instead, um, <laughs> this is my, the upcycling me. I We had a broken upholstered recliner that it, it was broken so it, it couldn't be donated. But I was sentimental for these chairs. There was a couple of them because they were, um, my mom and dad had them and then we inherited them and then they came to live with us and we still had them anyway. So I decided just to take a piece of the of that nice tapestry upholstery just from the back because the back had, you know, no damage whatsoever. And when I took that piece of fabric from there, um, the batting was really nice. So I grabbed a piece of the batting too. So this is chair, upholstery chair batting that I'm going to use because it's real nice and stiff. So I cut those down. I actually cut these to eight and a half because it'll make it really bulky if we try to sew this into the seams. So eight and a half for your 
five pieces of batting. Now I only had enough for four, so I grabbed one of my uh, foam pieces and it wasn't even eight and a half, but I'm going to sandwich it <laughs> in with a piece of just regular batting and uh, that'll be my bottom. So four pieces of uh, that chair upholstery, a sandwiched uh, Frankenstein piece of whatever for my bottom. And then uh, to bind the top, I uh, probably will only need one with a fabric strip. This is a, a two and a half inch strip with a fabric. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to attach two together just to give me enough just in case. I think it'll be plenty, just one, but we'll see. So that's what we need. Those are your supplies. And now I'm going to sandwich my little make little mini quilts of my outside fabric, inside fabric and batting. Okay, so originally I was going to quilt them completely with the lining as well and then it would just be a raw seam inside but the lining would be nice and tight and and quilted down but I decided to just go ahead and do a traditional um, drop-in lining and so I quilted just to the batting so I did a cross and then just to pop out this square there so that's how I quilted it so quilted all of those. I think it turned out really cute. Can you see that? Just kind of poofy in all the right places. Then the first thing you want to do is decide which piece, which square is going to be your center or excuse me, your um, bottom. And so that is going to be your center square thusly so all of them will be attached to that bottom piece or center piece so start by just adding two and I just did an additional thing just to strengthen it as well as add a little interest so of course it's going to be like this so what I did on the seams here is I did a little zigzag stitch as well. So I sewed them together first like this, and I actually added a zigzag. I sewed them together with a zigzag, and then I added a zigzag on top of that too. So then you will need to attach these two to the, that center or bottom piece as well. So you'll have that cross going on. And then you're gonna start sewing these two together, these two, these two. And I actually did the lining separately so that I could show you. Same exact way, I started with the three in the middle and then I created another three and then you sew the sides together. So this is what the lining ended up looking like. You see that? So when I'm done sewing the exterior quilted pieces together, then I will just put this inside of it and then we can sew the top all around this top edge here and then we'll bind it. So it may, if you've never done a, a cube or a square like this before, you may want to practice with the lining. Much easier to do that with the lining before you would start with the out, outer because it can get kind of these corner pieces can get really bulky so what I suggest kind of a little tip um, just don't get confused don't confuse yourself with all these different seams coming to a, a weird shape just concentrate on the this seam that you're sewing together like you would any seam right sides together and just kind of follow it along. Also, don't go all the way to the edge of the fabric. Try to start and do your back stitching 
right on the seam. That will also help you with this corner bulk. I didn't do it as, I didn't care too much in the lining because the lining is thin, but when I start doing these pieces together like that, this here is gonna get really bulky. So don't go, when you sew, say for instance, when I start to sew this together, I am not going to go all the way to the end of the fabric. I'm going to start about a quarter inch where the seam would be. And make sure you backstitch, so make sure your, your seams are connecting and you're overlapping your seams, but don't go all the way because then that kind of gives you some wiggle room in your big seams when they all come together like that. So that's what I'm going to do next and then we'll move on to sewing the two pieces together. Okay so I have that done. I have that all sewed together on my sides. I zigzagged as well just for because I like to over secure my things. And so now you have an uh, ups, upside down, a inside out cube. So let's go ahead and turn it right side out. Poke out your little corners so they're nice and sharp. And I didn't trim them or anything. That's just how they turned out. So that's, you don't need to worry about that. If you're not, if you didn't sew all the way to the very end, you're going to have your little sharp corners. And then you just put your lining right in. Now you'll have to kind of adjust this, you know, because of sewing. It's going to be probably different size unless you are a perfect sewer. <laughs> but fit this in as best you can. And then all your seams match up. Go ahead and pin those after you've trimmed. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to make sure my bottom is nice and fitted in. And then I usually, sorry usually just kind of shake it so that I know that everything, this is not going well on camera. <laughs> so I get that in, I fit that in, make sure my corners are matching. And then you can either trim it or you can fold this in. Just get this even, then pin your four corners here and then we're gonna sew one time around. So I'll be back for that. So I went ahead and fitted it better in there. So I pinned it, folded it in uh, where it was a, a bit too long so that everything matched nicely. Um, you know, again, if, if this had been a fitted lining where it was all I would have had to do is bind the outsides, I had sandwiched each of these, it would have been nice and tight and flat. Or if I had made my lining even a tad smaller, then it would have fit better. I, it, it's going to be fine. There's nothing wrong with having just a, a, a little loose of a lining. That's fine too. So I'm just going to do a top stitch now around and I'll probably just do an eighth of an inch so that uh, when I bind it, then you won't see that, that little stay stitch all around. So I will do that and then we'll come back and start binding. If you have, haven't binded before, um, all it is is a width of fabric strip, um, two and a half inches, depending on how wide you want your binding. Sometimes I cut them down depending on what kind of project I'm working on. And then you fold it in half and press it. So you have this folded in half strip. Now some people do a on the bias binding strip and that is good for when you're doing curves and things like that. But with this box, it's the simplest binding that you could do. 
other than a straight, <laughs> one straight thing. Because when you go around the curves, you're just flattening your corners. So, or not curves. When you, when you go around your corners, you're just flattening it. So you're just going straight. So there's no mitered corners that you need to worry about like you would in a quilt. So uh, with the fabric strip is just fine. So I did indeed only use one to bind this one strip, which, you know, with the fabric strip is anywhere from 40, 40 to 44, something like that. I think that's all I used is because I did cut off a little bit. So I think only 40 inches is what I used, but I would give yourself a little extra just to be sure. So you place the raw edge on the raw edge of your, um, why do I keep confusing this? I keep saying cube. A cube would be closed. This is just a square box. <laughs> so you put the raw edge on the raw edge here, and you can decide whether you would like it on the outside or the inside. Um, either way is fine. When you're finished with your binding, um, that if you want to have your larger binding on the outside, then you would start uh, with your binding on the inside. So you sew it and then you flip it. That would make it larger. I started on the outside and so I will be flipping it around to the inside. So the larger binding will be on the inside. So that's just totally up to you where you want to start inside or outside. So you sew it a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now you want to start your binding on one of the sides giving yourself a little tail. So like three or four inches is enough. So you start, sew all the way around and you end with a tail as well. Here, let me even this out so it doesn't. And then when you come around, so you've got these two tails sewed back stitch as well so that you, you know, this is secured. And then either you can, I'm not going to explain the on the bias uh, binding closure. I just did a simple straight stitch straight across. So all I did was I matched up the ends. I cut off my selvage here. I matched up my ends so that they're just overlapping by a quarter inch each. So you trim that down so that it's nice and tight across your project, but you're overlapping by a quarter inch. And then all you do is open that little part up, right sides to right sides, bring it to your machine, sew a quarter inch seam, and then when you flip it back, it'll be nice and flat on your project there because you're just taking up that quarter seam of each side. So just like that. So that's what I did. And now I'm going to be flipping it over and sewing on the inside. So I'll be sewing in the round it's called, where you sew on the inside instead of the outside. Put your presser foot this way and I'm probably going to do just a eighth of an inch. You could do a quarter of an inch. You just have a little bit flappy going on. I like to do a quarter, in, uh, excuse me, an eighth of an inch so that I know this is nice and secure. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And here it is finished. And I absolutely love it. Look at all the fun patchwork on here. It's nice and, and sturdy. So it will, I rather like the idea that this is going to house more UFOs and I used UFO, <laughs> UFO to make it. So that's kind of cool. And the binding turned out really nice, if you can see inside as well. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you are interested in finding out how to make this easy pineapple block, then uh, again, my link will be below to that video. So uh, have a good day.